Hello, I'm Jerry Romine, The Entrepreneur Abroad. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to start investing with just $1,000. And everything I'm going to show you in this video today is absolutely free and there's nothing for you to buy. I just want you to get started with your investing by learning and understanding the basics. Here's what we're going to cover today. Number one, getting a stock brokerage account. Number two, which investing strategy to use, long term or short term. Number three, fundamental versus technical investing. Number four, helpful free websites. Number five, how to properly research stocks. Number six, understanding ETFs, which are exchange traded funds, mutual funds, and indexes. Number seven, risk management, the 2% rule. Number eight, how much you should invest per trade. Number nine, how much you should risk per trade. Number 10, when to take losses. Number 11, when to take profits. Number 12, creating a trading plan for every stock you buy. And 13, a checklist for things to do. And be sure to stick around to the very end because I'm saving the absolute best for last where I'm going to give you some free tools to help with your investing. In today's video, I'm going to try to be as in-depth as possible to give you the tools you need so you can understand your investing and feel confident in what you are doing. I like to keep my videos fast-paced and out of respect for your time, I'll keep this video as short as possible while providing you a few links to additional information. And again, everything will be 100% free. The only thing I ask is that if you find value in this video, please subscribe to the channel and drop a link if you find the information useful. So grab a cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. All right, let's get right into it. Number one is getting a stock brokerage account and this is easy and it can be set up within minutes and funded within a day. These days, most of the major brokerage accounts provide free trading and that includes well-known ones like Webull and Robinhood. You just want to make sure there are going to be no fees for traditional stock trading. If you are just starting out, I recommend Webull which offers a great mobile app as well as online trading platform. I haven't used Webull and I have a promo link for you in the video description where you can get two free stocks valued at up to $1,400. I also have a free Webull tutorial video in the description that goes over all of Webull in depth. Webull really has a powerful free platform which is why I recommend it. But if you already have a free brokerage account where you can trade without fees, then there's no need to open up a new account. For more advanced traders, I recommend getting an account with TD Ameritrade and using their Thinkorswim software. Thinkorswim is much more powerful, takes time to learn, and it's ideal for advanced traders. Webull and TD Ameritrade are the brokerages that I personally use and love. Brokerages like Merrill, E-Trade, and Charles Schwab are also great free brokerages that have some really good services as well. The most important thing is to get a brokerage account set up so that way when you're ready to trade, your account is ready for you. Number two, let's go over short or long-term investing and I've found that most people make this much more complicated than it needs to be. I define short and long-term investing by how the IRS treats your gains. So a short-term capital gain results from an asset owned for one year or less before it is disposed of. While capital gains are generally taxed at a more favorable rate than salary or wages, gains that are classified as short-term do not benefit from any special tax rates and are subject to taxation as ordinary income. As regular taxable income, short-term gains are subject to one of seven tax rates that correspond to the seven federal tax brackets in the U.S. ranging from 10 to 37 percent. Long-term capital gains are derived from assets that are held for more than one year before they are disposed of. Long-term capital gains are taxed according to graduated thresholds for taxable income at 0, 15, or 20 percent, and there are a few exceptions where it can be higher than 20 percent. What you want to remember is that long-term investing is typically taxed at a lower rate. How and when does this matter? Well, if I'm investing in a Roth IRA or tax advantage accounts, my goal is to have long-term investing so I can have the lowest tax rate possible. But if I am actively trading an account, then I am maximizing profits and taxes are a secondary concern. What type of investor am I? Well, in my Webull and TD Ameritrade account, I do a lot of trading and many of those will be closed out in less than a year, so that would classify me as a short-term investor. But I also have over seven figures in tax advantage accounts and in those cases, I'm definitely a long-term investor. So the reality is I'm both a short-term and a long-term investor just depending on the accounts and the amount of activity I have and whether or not those trades are closed out in less than one year. What type of investor are you? Well, that's completely up to you. If you're buying and rarely selling, then you could be considered a long-term investor and you would definitely have tax advantages. Number three, let's go over the differences between fundamental and technical investing. Fundamental analysis is a method of evaluating securities by attempting to measure the intrinsic value of a stock. Fundamental analysis study everything from the overall economy and industry conditions to the financial condition and management of companies. Earnings, expenses, assets, and liabilities are all important characteristics to fundamental analysis. Technical analysis differs from fundamental analysis in that the stock's price and volume are the only inputs. The core assumption is that all known fundamentals are factored into the price, thus there is no need to pay close attention to them. 
Technical analysts do not attempt to measure a security's intrinsic value, but instead use stock charts to identify patterns and trends that suggest what a stock will do in the future. I recommend beginners focus on fundamental analysis because the goal is to find profitable companies to invest in, and I think this increases your likelihood for success. And then if you add technical analysis to fundamentally sound companies, I think you further increase your chance for success, and that's what I do. Number four, let's go over some helpful free websites. Number one is yahoofinance.com. If you need to look up anything on a company from news to the financial statements, Yahoo Finance is the place to start and it's absolutely free. Number two is investopedia.com. Investopedia has a wealth of information on it and if you need to look up anything about investing, this is the place to go. So if you don't understand an investing concept or a term, go to investopedia.com. Number three is jerryromine.com. That's my website, and I've got a ton of free tools there for you for when to take profits, when to take losses, how to set up and track your portfolio. Everything is there, and we'll be going over that in just a minute. Number four, there's a ton of free information online, but if you start with Investopedia and Yahoo Finance, that'll get you started, and you'll find your own favorites over time. Number five, how to properly research stocks. All publicly traded companies are required to prepare financial statements four times per year to release to the public. The easiest way to find that data is to use Google search and search the company name plus investor relations. Let me give you an example. For this example, go to google.com and then search on eBay investor relations and that will pull up these search results and you'll see eBay Inc investor relations. Click on that link and it will take you to this page and here we can click on quarter one press release and we can also see there are a ton of other options available. So we'll start here with the quarter one press release and it takes us to this page and here we can see a press release from eBay and it's going to cover a lot of current happenings with eBay and if we scroll on down the page we're going to get into financial operations and it's a pretty long document and this is a great way to find out more information on eBay. Here we can see assets, liabilities, and stockholder equities, just a ton of information in this part. The next thing we can do is from the investor relations page we can look at the form Q10 and this is a really important form. Let's start off with a definition of what the Q10 is, and we're getting that from our favorite website, Investopedia. The Q10 is a comprehensive report of a company's performance submitted quarterly by all public companies to the Securities and Exchange Commission. The form provides investors with a financial position of companies on an ongoing basis. It contains financial statements, management discussion and analysis, disclosures, and internal controls. Companies must file their 10 Qs 40 or 45 days after the end of their quarters, depending on the size of their public float. And now we're looking at eBay's form 10Q, and we're just going to do a quick perusal of it and you can see we've got a condensed consolidated balance sheet and there's just simply a ton of financial information so if you want to know anything about the companies this is one of the first places you can go to look a lot of companies will have similar investor relations page so now let's go ahead and take a look at the stock information page here we can see we've got some basic stock information and one of the things i like on ebay is if you scroll down we can see investor alerts and you can automatically receive ebay financial information by email you click on a button sign up for it and press so you're going to have that information. And one more thing I'd like to show you from the investor relations page is the financial information. You click on that and it will take you to this page. And here you can go back and look at any of the different financial reports eBay has had. It just depends how deep you want to go, but you can get all of the information. And one more way you can find useful information is go to Google and then search for the company's name, in this case eBay, and then add form 10 hyphen K and that's going to pull up the annual report. So this is just another way to find the same page and we'll look at the annual report for eBay. So we click on this button and it takes us over here and now we've got the form 10K, the annual report and again we just have even more financial information and data and this is what a total of 59 pages. Another way to get the financial information is to go to yahoofinance.com and then search for the ticker signal, in this case eBay, and that will pull up eBay's information. And I like the financial information from Yahoo Finance because it's a very clean presentation. So we've got the summary and we can get a lot of information here. We can scroll down. Here's more information about eBay. A lot of information on that page, but we can also go into the financials. And from the financials, we have the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. So all of this information is quick, readily available, and easy to find. And we can click on them to drop down even more information, but there is a ton of data and information here. We also can get analysis information, scroll down, and we can see even more information. And another useful tab here is going to be the statistics. So these are just a few of the ways that you can get a lot of financial information on different companies. These two ways will show you how to find that important financial data, but if you're like most people, you don't know how to read financial statements. The good news is I have a free video that teaches you how to quickly and easily understand financial statements. I'll put that link in the description, and I cannot emphasize enough how important that video will be to your education and understanding of stocks. Be sure to check it out.
Number six is understanding ETFs, mutual funds, and indexes. ETFs, mutual funds, and indexes are a great way to invest because instead of investing in just one stock, you're investing in a basket of securities which can diversify your risk. And if you are investing for retirement, these types of investments can offer tremendous advantages. If you would like to fully understand these investments, then be sure to watch my video where I break down the differences between each type of investment so you know which one is right for you. That link is in the description. Number seven is the 2% rule. What is the 2% rule? The 2% rule is an investing strategy where an investor risks no more than 2% of their available capital on any single trade. To implement the 2% rule, the investor first must calculate what 2% of their available trading capital is, and that is referred to as the capital at risk. How the 2% rule works. The 2% rule is a restriction that investors impose on their trading activities in order to stay within specified risk management parameters. For example, an investor who uses the 2% rule and has a $100,000 trading account risks no more than $2,000 or 2% of the value of the account on a particular investment. By knowing what percentage of investment capital may be risked, that investor can work backward to determine the total number of shares to purchase. And don't worry, I'm gonna give you a free tool to help you with the 2% rule that makes this super easy. If you want to be an old and profitable investor, then you want to make sure you follow the 2% rule. In fact, many professional traders follow the 1% rule. Number eight are my two rules of trading. Number one is always protect your capital. And number two is to be a profitable trader. So many wannabe investors rush into the markets without any set of rules for trading, and that's the beginning of their downfall. Professional investors always prioritize capital preservation, and with that in mind, I've created my free tools to help you with your trading. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, and my free tools and this video are just for entertainment purposes only. I always have to work in that legal disclaimer. Number nine are my free tools, which include money management, profit goals, when to take losses, and tracking your portfolio. Let's assume that you're a new trader and only have $1,000 to start your investing. Let's jump over to my free tools where it's going to be easier for me to give you a demonstration on how everything works and just how easy this can be. All right, we're now at jerryromine.com and we're in the portfolio section for our free tools and portfolio tracker. All of the links that I've talked about before, these are the steps for stock investing success and you can go through each of those, click on them and they'll take you right to it. We've got ticker information at the top so let's look at risk management for smart investors. If we hover over the eye, it's a pop-up window and it says how much cash do you have available for investing. Jerry says never invest more cash than you can afford to lose. If you do not learn good risk management, you are always only a few trades from being wiped out. So in this example, we're going to say you have $1,000 and then the account risk per trade. Normally we want that to be 10% or less and the more you risk, the faster you can be wiped out. Managing risk keeps you in the game. Ultimately, you decide. Jerry says beginners often risk too much and get wiped out early. 10% per trade is a good starting point. As your skills progress, you can develop your own style and what works for you. So we're gonna go ahead and put in 10% here. For the acceptable trade risk, Acceptable trade risk varies person to person. 10 to 20% gives a stock room to move. The more you risk, the faster you could be wiped out. 5 to 20% is a good starting point. If the stock is not volatile, 5% can be plenty. Look at the charts and see the trading history to determine a reasonable risk percentage. Jerry says, if you do not have proper risk and trade management, stay on good terms with your parents just in case you need to move back in with them. So in this example, we're gonna go ahead and put 9%. And now let's go down to our profit goal, minimum percentage. The profit goal is here to help you plan your exit. One strategy is once you hit your desired profit, you can follow it with a stop loss order to protect your profits. At least have a number in mind. The default could be 20%. Jerry says you should always have a trading plan and profit goal when you invest. The higher the risk, the higher the reward should be. One plan can be to match your risk to your reward. So if you have a 20% risk, you could expect a 20% profit. You could also use the notes section of your portfolio, which is below for your trading plan. So in this example, we're gonna go ahead and put 11% for our profit goal. Our next step is we wanna click the blue button, get live rate or update below to update this section. So if you make any changes in this section here, you wanna come down, you wanna put in the stock, and we're just gonna go ahead and use eBay for an example. And then we're gonna click on the click live rate and update. Once we click that button, it's going to tell us the current stock price for that stock, which is $49.40, and the maximum number of shares to buy. And we'll cover that in just a minute. So let's go back up to our max per trade amount. If we hover over the eye, it tells us, based on your account risk trade and acceptable risk per trade, this is the maximum amount you should have per trade. 
Jerry says, suck it up, buttercup. I know the max per trade amount might feel like it's too small, but don't get mad at me. Get mad at mathematics. If you want a bigger number here and you want to follow proper money management, then add a zero or two to your cash for investing. So this is telling us we've got $1,000 available for investing. We don't want to risk more than 10% per trade and our maximum trade amount is $100. So if we come down here and our stock price is 49.40, it tells us the maximum number of shares we could get is 2.02. .02. Next, let's look at our number of trades. This is a simple function of math. We've got 1,000 for investing. We're only gonna do 10% risk per trade, so that would be 10 trades, and we've got more information here. Our acceptable loss per trade. Play around with the account risk per trade and acceptable risk per trade and your profit goal to see how the acceptable loss per trade varies. It's all about risk reward. Jerry says beginners wash out fast because they do not understand risk management. Every trade should have a trade plan. Now you have a trade plan and it's up to you to follow it. So the acceptable loss per trade is $9. That means we have a $100 maximum trade amount and the most we could lose on this trade is $9 and that corresponds with our 9% acceptable risk per trade. Do you remember earlier when we talked about the 2% rule? That's what this is all about. So your overall account risk per trade is the 2% rule, and right now we're coming in at 0.9%. Let's go ahead and change our account risk per trade, and let's say we were willing to do 15%, and for the acceptable risk per trade, we were going to do 15%. We would come down and we will click on the click live rate update and watch what happens. Now it's telling us that our overall account risk per trade is 2.25%, and since we're over the 2%, we get a warning that this is a higher risk than what we should be taking. Very, very helpful. And you'll also notice that it changes the maximum per trade amount and the maximum number of trades. So you can play around with your account risk per trade and your acceptable risk per trade, and it's always going to update and tell you what you can do. And if you have a warning here, then you have exceeded your 2% rule. Now let's look at our stock purchase information. We're looking up eBay. Our current stock price is 49.4 and the maximum number of shares we could buy is 2.02. .02. If we hover over the I for information, the number of shares you can buy to meet your risk management criteria. See max per trade amount. Jerry says, if you wanna be an old profitable trader, then learn to trade with discipline. Never risk more than you can afford to lose. And we're just getting started. Let's scroll down a little bit further. And here we can see we've got eBay's information. We've got the website. So if you click on this, it will take you to their home website whenever we know it. It tells us the industry they're in, and it also gives us their country of origin. Our next section is plan the trade and trade the plan. So this is the trading plan you've been waiting for. So check this out. We're going to sell if the stock drops to $44.95. We'll hover over the I and it says, based on your acceptable risk per trade, sell at this price to limit your losses. Jerry says, cut your losses fast and let your winners run. Then we can look at a, what a stop loss order is. So you wanna sell if your price gets to $44.95 and one of the ways you can do that is with a stop loss order. And a stop loss order is an order placed with a broker to buy or sell once the stock reaches a certain price. A stop list is designed to limit an investor's loss on a security position. Jerry says, having a stop loss order in place is a great way to limit your losses. If you set it too tight, you may close the position too fast. If the stock is highly volatile, then be sure to know the trading ranges and set your stop loss accordingly. And what I normally do is set a trailing stop loss, and we've got more information for that right here. And then we also have our minimum profit price target. Now you notice how our trailing stop loss is at 9%? Well, that is coming from our acceptable risk per trade. Next, let's look at our profit target, which is 54.83. And the profit target is computed off your profit goal and shows the sell price you need to reach this goal. Jerry says, once you reach your profit price target, reassess your position. If you like the stock and want to keep it, consider raising your stop loss order to protect your profits and set a new profit goal. Or if you have a trail stop in place, you are already limiting losses and protecting profits. So this minimum profit price target is coming from your profit goal of 11%. All of it is automatically computed for you and here you've got your trading plan. Now let's add the stock to our portfolio and create a trading plan. We put the account that it's coming from, the date that we bought it, the number of shares that we bought, and the cost basis. Right now the cost basis is $49.40 and I'm going to put in $48.50 so we can see what a small profit looks like. And then we come down and we click on the add stock and it tells us the ticker number that we're adding. We click on that and it's going to create this for us which shows us the symbol, the stock name, the shares, cost basis, current price, the value, our portfolio percentage, our profit and loss which right now is $3.60 total and here's our trading plan, the initial stop loss and our minimum profit target. Voila, everything is right there. 
I've added nine more stocks. So now we've got a stock portfolio with 10 stocks and we can see what our cost basis is on all of these stocks. The current value is 923.34. Our portfolio percentages, we can see which ones are profitable in green, which ones are not profitable in red. And we've got our initial stop and our minimum profit. And then let's look at our notes date. Normally I would put in the date on when I bought it. So I would always know that information, but you could also mix it up and you could say sell at 41. So if you bought Marvel at 2703 and for whatever the reason you wanted to sell it at $41, you could put that in the notes here and voila, here is your $1,000 portfolio, everything broken down, and you can come back, refresh the page every day, check out all of the information, and it's here. And here's one more thing on the page. If you scroll down, I've got my most recent video here. All I ask is that you click on the play button and let it play all the way through to help me out on YouTube and give me some YouTube love. Welcome to my free tools. I really am looking forward to your comments on these. The risk management, portfolio, and trading plan are powerful free tools and make it easy to check your stocks and know when to sell or when you have met your minimum profit targets. I really hope that you get a lot of use and benefit from these tools and appreciate that I have developed them for you. And for my Patreon members, if you would like to increase your free portfolio size, be sure to send me a message in Patreon. I know some of you might be wondering why I'm providing these free tools and let me be completely transparent and I'm happy to explain that to you. These tools not only cost me money to develop, but I also have to pay for the data. And the only way these tools make sense is if I can keep my YouTube channel growing. And I believe that the best way to grow a YouTube channel is by providing valuable content. And these free tools are part of the content that I'm providing for my channel. So if you love these free tools, you now have a vested interest in my YouTube channel growing. And the fastest way for my channel to grow is when you like, subscribe, view, and share my videos. An easy way for you to help is whenever you're using the free tools, please play the video at the bottom of the page to help the YouTube algorithm. Let's see if we can get this channel to over 100,000 subs. I really hope that you enjoyed today's videos and that you get a lot of use out of the free tools that I've created. Please be sure to drop some comments below. I love reading them and I look forward to seeing you in a fresh new video soon.